Hey everybody, welcome back to Chicory's Travels. And uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about Shenandoah National Park, and we're gonna really give an overview of the park's five campgrounds, the amenities, and uh, since Julie's been there a lot more than me, what she likes or doesn't like about each one. And we'll also be showing uh, photos and videos throughout this video. Yeah, and like he said, it's going to be a lot of information that we cover. So in the description, I will also have a link to a article on our website that also covers all of this. It also has photos. So if you want to go and bookmark that and be able to refer back to it later, you can. And I even have notes here. So if you see me looking down, because it is going to be a lot of information so that we can give you the best to help you make your decision about which uh, campground in Shenandoah National Park is best for you. Uh, but before we get started, I think it's kind of important for people to understand how the park is laid out. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Shenandoah National Park, it's over 300 square miles, but the thing that makes it so unique, and I'll, I'll put a little map up here so that you can see, it is um, almost rectangular, it's very long, and it has only one road that goes through it from uh, north to south. It is 105 miles. It's called Skyline Drive, and it has lots of um, great scenic overlooks, lots of trailheads, and uh, again, there's just the five uh, campgrounds. It's divided by four entrances into three different sections. So you got your northern, your central, and your southern district. And so we'll give you a quick overview of that and also about uh, height and things like that for the different entrances. And I will say this is one park where having a national park pass comes in handy because it's like $35, I think, to get mm -hmm, in. 30 or 35, yeah. Uh, and so you get that national park pass and uh, you just go a couple of times in and out of there and it saves you. It definitely saves you money. Yeah. So the no northernmost entrance is um, the Front Royal entrance because it's in the town of Front Royal, Virginia. So they call that mile zero of Skyline Drive. And that one has a covered entrance. I'll put up a picture here so that you can see. And it has a, a indicator on there that shows the max height difference, uh, max height uh, requirement. And that is um, 12 foot 10 inches. I really don't know why that is there. There is one tunnel in the park and it's in the Southern District, not the Northern, but for whatever reason, it's covered. So you have to be under 12 foot 10 to get in the Front Royal entrance. Um, if you're thinking, oh gosh, I'm too tall, forget it. Don't stop the video because there are other entrances. And also in the blog posts, I also give you some options. If you wanted to be at the northern end and Shenandoah National Park isn't a good option for you, I give you local campgrounds that we think are good options. Yeah, and we're between 13 and 13 and a half feet tall, and uh, we've camped there. So yeah, and it is possible. We've camped at in Shenandoah National Park, but not in the Northern District because of the height. And there is one campground in the Northern District, Matthew's Arm. And after we get through the layout of the park, we'll talk about that specific campground. The next one is the Thornton Gap entrance, and it's at mile 31 and a half of Skyline Drive, and it's near Lou Ray. Uh, the town of Luray, Virginia, which um, they have a lot of tourist stuff in Luray. Yeah, yeah, Luray is really cool. Um, this one also is covered and it also has max height. This one is 12 foot 8 inches. Um, there is a tunnel. If you go um, south on Skyline Drive from the Thornton Gap entrance, you get to the one and only tunnel on Skyline Drive. It makes sense that there they would have a, a height requirement. There are two great campgrounds in that central district, but even if you're too tall like we are, and I have camped at um, Big Meadows, you just go down to the last entrance. But those two campgrounds, by the way, are the Big Meadows campground and the Lewis Mountain campground. Um, and we'll talk about those in just one minute. But you, if you want to stay at those, what you do is you go down to the third entrance, and that is the Swift Run Gap entrance. That one is covered, but it's much higher. 
it's 13 foot 10 inches. We use that entrance and it is perfectly fine coming in and going out. No problems at all. I will say another thing too is um, the Skyline Drive is not a highway. And so there are lots of twists and turns, um, slow speed limit. So mm -hmm. um, just be prepared for that. And, you know, you're not going to be able to drive like a maniac on that road, especially yeah. with an RV. Yeah, definitely. Um, like Sean said, it's a 35 mile an hour speed limit. So that 105 miles, it takes more than three hours to drive end to end. And that would be without stopping. And no one would drive down Skyline without stopping because there are, like I said, so many amazing um, overlooks that you pull into and want to get the, the scenery and stuff. So for that reason, most people pick a section of the park that they like to stay at and um, kind of just do things from that base of operations, if you will. And that's why in that central district, you've got the entrance on each, a northern side and a, a southern side or south of that anyway, um, so that it's kind of bookended and you can get in both ways. And if you wanted to go out and see some of the local town, you can get out from the different um, exits as well. And um, Thor Swift Run Gap is just to give you an idea of this total um, drive here. It's at mile 66.5. The nearest town, it's very small and it's called Elkton. The next one, uh, the next entrance and the last entrance is Rockfish Gap. And it has a clearance of none. None. It's yes, not wide covered. open. That's right. It's a wide open. And it's at mile 104.6, and it's way down south near Waynesboro, Virginia. Um, so way down south. Yeah, <laughs> and Sean, I don't know if you remember this, but when we were going to the campground in the Southern District, the first time we decided to go in, oh, actually, we were coming back from Great Smoky Mountain. So we mm -hmm. were coming from the south, and we decided to go in the Waynesboro entrance called Rockfish Gap. And at the campground is pretty far um, north from there. And so, I mean, I'm, by far, I'm talking like, you know, maybe 20 miles, but it seems a lot longer because it's a 35 mile an hour road, as we mentioned, but also when you use some tighter twists, the speed limit might even go down to 20, 25 miles. And it was very twist and turny. And I was trying to get my nerve up to take the, the fifth wheel by myself for a future trip. So Sean was with me, but I was driving and I was like, white knuckle. You remember that? Mm -hmm. But the worst part was we kept seeing in our rear view mirror, all these branches flying down behind us because there were a lot of low hanging branches. Yeah. But then when we exited the Loft Mountain campground, we went out the Swift Run Gap entrance, which the campground is only about 10 miles from. And it actually worked out a lot better. And it seemed like there weren't as many I don't think I knocked any branches down that time. So, and it didn't seem quite so, it was still twist and turns, but it just didn't seem quite as bad. So I really like that Swift Run Gap entrance, even for the Southern end of the park. So now let's get into the campgrounds. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is Matthew's Arm Campground. And that's here in the Northern District. It's at mile 22. Um, they have, bathrooms but no shower facilities and there's no camp store there either so the closest one is uh elk wallow wayside which has camping supplies and food service which is about two miles away yeah and um the food is like they have like quick service counter um and it usually doesn't start until after memorial day so it might be like a couple weeks after the campground opens um but the, the the reason why Matthew's Arm, I think, is my least favorite of all of them is because it doesn't have the showers. And the reason why that's important is none of the campgrounds in Shenandoah National Park have any hookups at all. I guess we should have led with that, right? Yeah. So that's another reason if you're interested in hookups and you want to stay in the local area, you might want to go to our blog post and see our links to some of the local area campgrounds that we've stayed at and that we think are good options. Um, one in the northern area and the Shenandoah River State Park, remember that? Mm -hmm. And the other one is the um, Spacious Skies Campground in Luray. So because there are no hookups. Um, to me, it's worth going without hookups because you're in the park. 
but uh, Matthew's arm doesn't work for us because our RV is too tall for the two entrances, um, number one. But I did drive through there and get this footage to show you what it looks like in case you are interested in it. Uh, one great thing about it is there are some amazing uh, trails, hiking trails right from the campground. So you don't have to even drive anywhere. One of those um, hiking trails goes to Overall Run Falls, which is the highest waterfall in the entire park. Not the prettiest, I don't think. You don't get all that close to it, but it is certainly pretty majestic to look at from a distance and see. The next one is a bigger campground. It's Big Meadows Campground, and it's at mile marker 51. And they have everything pretty much, except for hookups, like Julie said, mm -hmm. but they have uh, bathrooms, they have a camp store, they have laundry, and they have showers. I believe they're pay showers. Yeah, all the, the, the next three campgrounds that we're going to talk about do have shower facilities, but they're coin operated. It's $2.50 for a five minute shower. So know that in advance, but they do have change machines for that and for the laundry room. And, and then they also have a uh, like a hotel style lodge there mm -hmm. with a bar and a restaurant um, pretty, pretty close right there next to the campground. And they also have cabins to rent as well. Yeah. And the thing I like about all of the campgrounds in Shenandoah National Park and this Big Meadows is no exception is that they are not right on Skyline Drive. They're like um, a quarter to a half a mile away from the drive, maybe even a little bit further. I mean, it's a pretty decent drive from the, from the drive um, back, probably a quarter of a mile. I'm probably exaggerating because you got to go like, I think that's 20 miles an hour, might even be 15. Um, but it's really neat. There's a, a huge uh, uh, paved bike trails through there for people who want to ride their bikes because unless you're like super into biking you're not going to bike on skyline drive because there's a lot of elevation it's very twist and turny so you will see like the, the pro style bikers i call them that, that do it but for people who want to just like recreationally ride it's nice to be able to ride your bike around big meadows um, they also have the largest visitor center in the park. It has some really great displays. There are just tons and tons of trails that you can access right there from the campground that are very simple all the way up to very strenuous. So there's just so many options. And one really cool thing that is near there, a trail near there goes to something called Rapidan Camp, which is in Shenandoah National Park. And this is where President Hoover actually had a presidential retreat. This was pre-Camp David days. So it's pretty cool to go down there and the Park Service does a, um, a little presentation on it. And they also do um, ranger-led activities around there. So it's, it's, a, it's a really great um, campground. It's the most popular because of the fact that it's so centrally located because of all the amenities. It just um, draws a lot of people. Um, the campsites to me aren't as private as Loft Mountain, which is the last one we'll tell you about. But you can see from the pictures and video that I'm sharing with you here that they have back ends, they have pull through sites, they have uh, several of the little bathhouses that are, you know, the toilets and the sinks, not the showers. The sh all the shower facilities are at the very front of the campground. But they do have the smaller little bathrooms sprinkled throughout the different loops. And um, you have tent people and RV people all sprinkled through there. The next one, uh, about six miles further down the road, is uh, Lewis Mountain. And this is a smaller campground. It's the smallest, I think, mm -hmm. um, with 30 sites that I think are first come, first serve. Yeah, they're all first come, first serve. No reservations at Lewis Mountain. And they also have some cabins there as well. Yeah, and the cabins are pretty cool because they have your regular like family style cabins with kitchens and stuff. But then they also have what's known as a hiker cabin because, again, this is right off of the Appalachian Trail. There's a little over 100 miles of Appalachian Trail that go through Shenandoah National Park and they can it goes they go right along all the campgrounds. But the Lewis Mountain has these hiker cabins. They don't have any water, you know, running water. You have to use their bathhouse. Um, they're just bunk beds and you just get in out of the elements. So it's kind of in between tent and um, and regular cabin that would have like kitchens and stuff in it. So it's pretty neat. But they're also for RVs as well. Uh, most of those are smaller back end sites, but um, but there's still a range and uh, 
people like it there because it's it's really quiet because it's so small. They do also have a small a camp store and they have a small shower um, facility that has a few showers, again, coin operated. But no dump station at that one. But no dump station because it's so small, you have to drive the seven miles to Big Meadows um, to use their dump station. The next is a uh, tent only campground, which is mile 83.7. So pretty far away, uh, pretty far down Skyline Drive from Lewis Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a uh, group camping area. Yeah, and it's called Dundo. And so the reason why we mentioned it, even though there's no RVs, no campers, tents only, the reason why we mention it is you'll often hear and you'll even see on Shenandoah Park's uh, page, their website, that they have five campgrounds. And if we only covered four, people would go, well, why does it say five with the trickery say four? There is another one. It's not only that it's tent only, though, why it's not used very often um, by most individuals. It's because it's called a group campsite campground. So there are three group campsites. And what I mean by this is most um, in Shenandoah National Park, I think they say you can have like six people on a campsite. But there they're made for 20. And you can see from this photo here that they put several picnic tables there. And there's more than one fire pit so, or it's larger, you know, so there's room. But um, the only other thing they have there is pit toilets. There's no regular bathrooms. There's no dump station. There's no camp store. You would go down to what I think is the, the creme de la creme of all of the campgrounds in uh, Shenandoah National Park, and that is the Loft Mountain Campground. Yeah, and it's the largest. It's at mile 79.5, so just a few miles away from the Dundo group camping but they have over 200 sites. Um, I think mostly all pull through, mm -hmm. mostly all pull through sites and they have bathrooms, they have showers, they have laundry, they have a big camp store mm -hmm. and uh, a place where you can also get food. Yeah, and, and one food. of my favorite things about that camp store at Loft Mountain is that they have a milkshake machine so you can make like all these different custom milkshakes. So that's pretty fun after a day of hiking. Also, I really love it because only a mile away, you can, well, actually right there from the campsite, the Appalachian Trail actually kind of makes a loop around this campsite. And so you can get on the Appalachian Trail for a mile south of there and see two of the prettiest waterfalls in the park on a loop. It's a Doyle's Run and Jones River, I think is the name of them. And it's really nice. But also, just like all the other campgrounds, just you don't even have to get in your car if you don't want to. You can hike from right there. And then what Sean was talking about, the food, it's right across the Skyline Drive. So the campground is set maybe a quarter mile back. So you there's a little uh, walking path that you can take about a quarter of a mile to the Loft Mountain Wayside, it's called. And there they have, you know, the gift shop and snacks and stuff. But then they also have like a quick service order type uh, food with places to eat there as well. And then there's not a visitor center. So what they do on the weekends and kind of during the high season, during the week even, is they have what's called a mobile visitor center. And I'll show you a picture here. It's a really cool van that opens up and has displays and they have a ranger there to share information. So it's really neat. Now, one thing I will say about most of the campgrounds in Shenandoah National Park, like we said, they don't have hookups. So you have to rely on what you have in your RV. And many of the sites are wooded, which is both the blessing and a curse, right? Especially if you have solar, because um, you're not going to get the maximum amount of solar. You have to really search out a site mm -hmm. that has a lot of sunlight. Um, but so we always made sure to bring our generators too, because they do have set generator hours that you can use to charge up your batteries. Yeah. And so like what Sean's talking about, how do you search it out if you're making a reservation and in back in advance? The last thing that I'm going to talk about is recreation.gov. So if you're not familiar with it, stick around. And the last thing I'm going to do is take you on a little tour of recreation.gov so that you can see how you can look at a site in Shenandoah National Park without actually being there before you make your reservation. But back to generators and the hours for a minute. This is actually one of the things that I really like about Shenandoah National Park. You're in this national park. It doesn't have any hookups. 
So you're afraid you might hear just generators running all day and kind of ruining the ambiance. And that is not the case. They actually have very strict generator hours. So um, you can um, either pick a site that gives you good solar or you can um, run your generator. And for those of you that don't want to have anything to do with generators, most of the campgrounds have generator free um, loops. So, you know, there's different loops throughout the campground as you look at their campground maps, which I've linked to all of the different campground maps in my blog post. And uh, the, some loops are designated as just generator free. And that way you don't even have to be in those if you don't want to deal with generators at all. Yeah. And the cool thing too about these campgrounds is there's lots of wildlife walking through all the time. Yeah. So it's really, and they really are peaceful campgrounds. Yeah. And speaking of peaceful, you know, the other thing that I really love about Loft Mountain is the way that these sites are set almost all of them. There are some tent sites that are a little bit different, but most of the sites, they have several, I think it's four or five one lane roads. And then they have like an, uh, um, an, a perimeter that goes around. But on these one lane roads, on each side of them are these like U-shaped pull through sites. And so you pull in your RV, right? Or even if you're a tent camper, just your cars. And then on the side, is your own little private area that has a picnic table, fire pit, and a big grassy area big enough for a couple of tents. And um, they're always like have shrubs between you and your neighbors. So it's like you have this private little oasis and your car or your RV almost serves as a buffer between you and people going down, driving down that little one-way road. And so they're really, it was really quiet. We, when we yeah. were there, remember that one time we were there, we were there with our kids even. And I think every spot was taken on both sides of the row we were on. We were on row E and every single spot was taken and it was quiet. Mm -hmm. So nice. So the last thing I want to talk about is reservations. And before I get into recreation.gov, which is where you make the reservation, I do want to share something that's exciting for 2023. One problem that a lot of people have with national parks, and we certainly had it when we were traveling around full time, is being able to even get a reservation, especially at the busy times. And that's because a lot of them like reservations open up like 12 months in advance and they're like booked like that first day. So Shenandoah National Park, they actually used to open six months in advance, but now they're actually only opening 50% of the reservable sites will be open six months prior, I mean, six months prior. So what I mean by that is that most of the campgrounds do have some first come first serve. And if you look on their map, so for instance, here's a picture I'm gonna show you of Loft Mountain camp map. You'll see that it's color coded. And so some of them are first come first serve. And then some of them are for the six month out. That's 50% of the reservable sites. And then some of them are the two weeks out. So two weeks out, they take 25% of the remaining reservable sites and you can reserve those two weeks out. So that's for the people who don't want to plan as far in advance. And for the people who are like really last minute, the, uh, the last 25% of the remaining reservable sites come out four days prior. So this was something that they brainstormed and came out with based on a lot of surveys and and feedback and it's something they're trying out for 2023 so if you try it out let us know what you think of it and make sure to give the feedback also to Shenandoah National Park and let them know what you think about it because they want to see how smoothly it goes and again just a couple caveats because when I said of the reservable sites Lewis Mountain no reservable sites Loft Mountain if you're looking at the map it's mostly reservable sites and there are some first come first serve around the uh, perimeter. Uh, Big Meadows, only reserved. And then uh, Matthew's Arm has some first come first serve and some. So each one really is different. Each campground really is different. So the last thing I wanna do um, before we close this video is I just wanna show you a tutorial of what I mean by site selection in recreation.gov and how it really served us well at specifically at Shenandoah National Park. Okay, so I am sharing my screen right now. And what you should see in front of you is recreation.gov.
gov. And I have already uh, used the search tool up here to get to Loft Mountain Campground. You notice it says near Elkton, Virginia. This is the southernmost campground and my favorite. So I'm going to use it as an example. Um, the first thing that you'll see when you go to make a reservation is over on the left, you have uh, the sites, the list of sites. And over on the right, you have a map. And it's usually kind of zoomed in a little bit. This is a very large campground. So if you scroll out, you'll just see these things that want you to zoom up to see all the sites. But this kind of gives you an idea of what I was saying. Like when you come in up the road, you've got a perimeter. And then all these interior sites are the ones that are reservable. So let's just pick a date uh, pretty far away. Um, to see if something's going to be available. Now, remember, I said that 50% um, of the reservable sites are up to six months in advance, and that's what you're seeing here. And then after that, you're seeing they're not not yet released. So that's a new thing. If you're looking at a particular site and it's green, that's because it's first come, first serve. So let's pick this week of August here. We'll pick midweek to try to make it a little easier to find something. And I just pick a few days. So you put in the days that you think you're going to be there. And if, if you don't have a particular site or loop that you're looking for, you can just leave that blank. And automatically what you're going to get over here on the left is it's going to show you um, the sites that are available right now, the first come first serve sites. And um, so you just go just like that, right? Whoops. And you can just scroll down and, and see them. Now, if you wanted to see like when something is next available, five days beforehand, five days afterwards, you have those options as well. My favorite loop that I want to show you is E. So I'm going to go to E real quick. Don't mind all this scrolling. Okay. I'm going to go to E and show you some because this is where I've always stayed so far. Um, E160 is one of my favorite sites because it's really good for solar. Now you notice the map has already changed and it shows you where it is on the map. You've got this road. It, the nice thing about being on this side, 159, 157, is that your door of your RV, if it's on the passenger side of your vehicle, it opens to your little private picnic area. I ended up in E160 because these weren't available and I wanted some full sun. So my door opened to the road and then I walked around to the little picnic area. So that was a little weird, but um, that's just that information. So here's E160. Now you can either click here to see a picture or you could come over here um, to get more information. Um, so the thing I like about it is one, being able to see the photo. And then over here, if you came over to E160, if you were interested in that site, if you click on it, it just gives you a ton of information. So now it shows you the picture larger. And now you can see like up near the front of the site is going to be a little bit of shade depending on the back time of day, but there's no actual trees over this site. So there is plenty of good sun in the site. And then the next picture shows you that little private picnic area I was telling you about. And as you can see, there's room for tents here. So if you're the type that is going in your RV, but you might have some family members with a tent or you might have a canopy you want to put up, that's what this is really good for. Um, and then it shows you a picture from a distance. So you can see that there are no trees. Um, we stayed in another site that um, had one tree on each side. So we did not have any good sun. So that was one reason why we really liked this one. And as you can see here, this is what I meant by U-shape because this is a road that goes through here and you just kind of come in on a little bit of a U. And there's just another view of that picnic area to see more over where your tents, but you see how lush and thick this, uh, foliage is in between you and your neighbor because there's another loop back here and you have um, another campsite on this side and over on the right side you would have the other perimeter road but you are really nice and private this 30 feet is just the what they tell you is max length um, based on um, the 
sight length, but it is not the sight length. Let me show you where the actual sight length is. So if you scroll down a little bit here, you're going to see you get all of these things. So scroll on down, site details, it's going to tell you um, how many people, um, that there's no electricity, we know that, um, that there's no water, we know that because I already told you there's no hookups at these. Um, so you just scroll on down, now it's going to tell you allowable equipment, are you allowed to have campers and RVs on here? Yes, you are. Can you have a tent? Yes, you can also have a tent, cars, you know, all that good stuff. But here's where the really good information always is. Click on allowable equipment and allowable vehicle driveway details. And this is going to give you really good information. First off, it's pull through. They tell you if it's a slight or a significant grade. So that's really good to know. And this one, they called it a slight grade. I really didn't even feel like there was one. So it was very slight. Um, it also tells you um, here where it tells you driveway length. That's because there are a very small number, just a handful of sites in the park, in the campgrounds, in the different campgrounds in the park that have a separate driveway. And it will tell you the length of that. But this one does not. It's all just that U shape like you saw in the in the picture. So that that's right here, the site length. So the actual site length is 42 feet for this particular site. And they are not uniform by any means, okay? So you are definitely, any site that you're interested in, always click on it and always look at the site length so that you really have an idea. So you remember up above where it said, yeah, you can have an RV, that is 30 feet because they're factoring in that you also have a car. And so that's why they're saying your your what your max length is. But really what you want to know is how long you are all together in, in your total, 42 feet. I uh, went camping with a friend of mine. Um, she and I were working on hiking all the trails in Shenandoah National Park. And so we brought my fifth wheel, which I towed with a big dually pickup truck, and she brought her um, car and the RV, the fifth wheel, you know, the fifth wheel, the truck and her car all fit on this site right here. Um, other information that they give you is what I already told you about, that there's a picnic table and a fire pit, coin showers. So if you were at the Matthews Arm Campground, remember they don't have showers, this wouldn't show up there. So that's why it's always just really good to use um, recreation.gov, I think. So thanks everybody for tuning in. We hope you got something out of this video. And if you travel to Shenandoah National Park and stay in one of the campgrounds or find a cool trail, uh, let us know and, and put it in the comments. We're really interested in, in seeing what people enjoy about it and if you have a good experience at the campground. So until we see you somewhere in Shenandoah National Park, safe travels.